Hello, and welcome to this episode in Grizzly's how-to video series. I'm Kent, and this is Sean, an engineer here at Grizzly. We hope that this, along with the other episodes of our how-to and comparison video series, help you, our customer, to upgrade and maintain your Grizzly equipment. Today, we're going to show you how to replace the bearings and install a new spiral cutter head in your 8-inch joiner. First, we'll show you how to remove the conventional straight knife cutter head, and then proceed to the installation of your new spiral cutter head. Grizzly pioneered the use of spiral cutter heads in joiners and planers because of their several distinct advantages over the standard straight knife cutter heads. These spiral cutter heads are much quieter and they last many times longer compared to the standard high speed steel knives. Plus, they're going to give you a much better finish, particularly in hardwoods and highly figured woods. The total procedure to install your new cutter head and to set up your joiner is about one hour. This video provides you an overview of the installation and helps you to familiarize yourself and visualize the process. It should be used in conjunction with the written instructions that are included with your new spiral cutter head. We recommend that you watch this video in its entirety and that you read your instructions thoroughly before you begin the project. You can also call technical assistance at 570-546-9663 if you need further assistance. But most importantly, remember to follow all shop safety procedures and remember, wear your safety glasses. They're the most important tool that you have. As with any job, you're going to need to have certain tools available. Keep this in mind before you start because you don't want to get halfway in and then discover that you're missing something and have to walk away from your machine when it's taken apart. The complete list of all the tools you'll need are included inside of the instructions that come with your new spiral cutter head. Most of these tools you probably already have. The two critical items are a gear or pulley puller and new bearings for the cutter head. While you can reuse your old bearings, we highly recommend that you install some new ones. Bearings are relatively inexpensive and they're easily damaged when they get removed. Since you'll already have your machine taken apart, it just makes sense to replace them while you're in there. The first step is to disconnect the power from your joiner. Remove the fence, cutter head guard, and rabbit extension table. Then take off the rear cover and belt guard and remove the drive belt. Lower the tables to make room for the cutter head to come out and then remove the knives. You can also flip them over so the sharp edge is facing down and secure by tightening the gib bolts. Remove the pulley from the cutter head. If it won't come off by hand, use the puller to remove it. Whatever you do, don't try to take it off by hitting it with a hammer. Mark the front bearing block with a piece of masking tape for reference and remove the cap screws. Then carefully lift the bearing blocks and the cutter head from the casting. There may be shims underneath one or both of the bearing blocks. If there are, just mark them front or rear and put them to the side. You may or may not need these when you install your new cutter head. Set the cutter head assembly on the 2x4 blocks with the front side down. Wrap tape around the blocks to hold them together. Now tap the top of the cutter head shaft gently with a dead blow hammer and a 4x4 block to separate it from the rear bearing block. Remove the front bearing block. It should pull off with hand pressure. If it doesn't, gently tap it with one of the wooden blocks. Now we are ready to install the new cutter head. The first thing you want to do is wrap a layer of cardboard around it to protect the inserts from getting chipped. Install the new bearings in the bearing blocks. Then stand the cutter head upright between the two 10 inch 2x4 blocks. And gently seat the cutter head into the bearing blocks with a block of wood and a dead blow hammer. Wipe down the casting where the bearing blocks will rest and then carefully set the assembly into place. Reinstall the block cap screws and the pulley onto the cutter head shaft. Make sure everything is tight and then remove the cardboard. Raise the outfeed table and then use a straight edge and some feeler gauges to make sure that the cutter head is parallel. Make sure to measure off the cutter head body and not the inserts. Check the inside and then the outside. The spec for this is four thousandth of an inch or less from front to back. If it is more than this, then you will need to add some of the shims back under the appropriate cutter head block to bring it to spec. Reinstall the belt on the pulleys, 
Then raise the outfeed table until it is higher than the knives. Use the belt to slowly rotate the cutter head until one of the carbide inserts is at top dead center under the straight edge. Gently rock the insert back and forth while you slowly lower the outfeed table to the height of the insert. When correctly set, the carbide insert should just barely touch the straight edge. It should make a light tick, tick, tick sound and shouldn't visibly raise or move the straight edge. Now raise and set the infeed table with the outfeed table. Lock the tables and reset the positive stop bolts. Reinstall the fence support and the fence. The rabbit extension table and the cutter head guard. With the power still unplugged from the machine, slowly rotate the cutter head by hand using the belts. Make sure that it doesn't come into contact with anything. Reinstall the belt cover and you're done. Now we're going to show you how to rotate or change the inserts. Grizzly cutter heads are equipped with four-sided carbide inserts. This is much harder than high-speed steel, so they last much longer before they go dull. The other advantage with the four sides is that when they do start to dull, they can be rotated for a new factory sharp edge. And if for some reason you hit a nail or some small foreign object, you only need to replace a few of the inserts instead of a whole set of regular knives. To help you keep track of which sides are new and which are dull, these inserts have an index mark in one corner. When the mark revolves around to its starting position, the insert should be replaced. Replacement of the carbide inserts is very straightforward. First, clean off all dust or debris from the cutter head. Loosen and remove the Torx head fixing screw. Thoroughly blow out the pocket. Rotate or replace the insert, being sure to set it towards the rear of the pocket, and reinstall the screw. The screw should be tightened to approximately 50 inch-pounds. Now remember, that's inch-pounds. That's about how tight the average person can get it by hand using a screwdriver type tool. Because of the design, there's no time consuming setting of the blades to the right height. The correct height is already built into the cutter head. Now a word of caution. If there's any residual dust or oil in the pocket, it will affect how the insert sits inside of the pocket. If this happens, you may get small lines inside of your workpiece. If this happens, simply remove the insert Reclean the insert pocket and reinstall the insert. Before you plug your joiner in, do a test run. Check the tightness of all bolts and fasteners that were moved or loosened during the installation process. If everything checks out all right, you're ready to make some sawdust. Enjoy.